We've got a wily Washington commander coming up. Offensive lineman on the program. Look at these graphics. What's going on? Andrew Wiley. Oh, oh, okay. They're getting iced. Shout out to Smirnoff. That doesn't look like Smirnoff ices, though. Who knows? I bet our next guest doesn't even know what he was drinking in this. Yeah, it doesn't seem like it. He spent the last five seasons playing on the O-line for the Kansas City Chiefs. He's fresh off dominating the Philadelphia Eagles to win. This is amazing. His second Super Bowl, and he just inked a three-year contract with the Washington Commanders. Please welcome Andrew Wiley to the show. Andrew, hi. Hey, how we doing, guys? Amazing, and I will say that my producer in my ear right before we came back from commercial said, he's in a really good mood, and I'm like, you think? <laughs> you think <laughs> yeah, he's in a, in a good, good mood? mood? Because he just, yeah. yeah, he just got paid. He's got a whole new energy about him, but you also just won two Super Bowls. How good is life for you right now? Man, it's great. It's, uh, you know, it's been a great season um, leading up to the off season. so i uh, just been having a, a great time, <laughs> absolutely blessed, and, uh, you know, just... Finally getting back into the swing of things, starting to work out again, but, you know, it's, it's been great. Are you, Andrew, are you really starting to work out again? I wouldn't work out until the <laughs> ring ceremony. Once I get the, the second <laughs> ring, then I'll start working out. Yeah, no doubt. It was, it was only my second workout, though, so it's not like I've been going too crazy yet. <laughs> That's what I like. How does it compare to the first one? You're in this rare, truly, like truly rare company of somebody who's gotten to the pinnacle of the sport, the greatest to ever do it, the greatest, uh, twice. How does it compare to that first one? Um, you know, this one means a little bit more to me personally. Um, you know, playing every game this year, getting all those starts, and then, um, you know, continuing the run through playoffs all the way up to the Super Bowl, and then actually getting to get out there and compete myself. Um, so this one truly means the world to me. Uh, personally, it carries a little more weight, but, um, but you know, it's just, be a two-time world champion, there's nothing better. <laughs> it's so true. Two rings here. And, you know, when you talk about it meaning a little bit more to you, you were the only guy, unless you can tell me differently, I think you're the only guy on that O-line that was the holdover from when you guys lost to the Bucks in Super Bowl 55. Not to bring that up, sorry. So I would imagine this run has to be super special to you. You personally dominating in the AFC Championship win over the Bengals and then in the Super Bowl. Like, how, how does it feel coming off a loss knowing what that's like? Yeah, um, you know, it took a lot to, you know, to get that get that stink off the shoulder, you know. Um, so, you know, we, we carried that ship uh, for a long time. There, there was a, there was a few of us that were there, uh, just a couple couple of the guys, but um, from that from that loss in that Super Bowl. But um, but I was the only one out there uh, um, playing. But um, yeah, it's, it's it's truly special, you know. It, you know, it's not an easy path. Uh, there's a lot of games in a season. And, uh, you know, yeah. it, was, it was a fight for every single one of those. But, you know, just just the hell of a playoff run, um, you know, by me and the guys. And it was a lot of fun this year. Andrew, we media nerds love to talk about, oh, like a Super Bowl loss. It's hard to come off of that. It's hard. How You're saying it took a lot of work. It was a journey to get that off of your shoulder, out of your head. How did you do it? Man, I just, uh, you know, luckily, uh, you know, I got some great friends and great teammates in the locker room that I was in. Um, you know, just some lifelong guys and uh, guys that were out there with me, too. So, uh, you know, we kind of rallied together. You know, we, we know, um, you know, the finer details of what went down. And uh, we rallied together and worked harder than we ever had before. So, um, you know, it worked out for us. You spent so much time in Kansas City. I, I bet it was Bitter, bittersweet having to leave of course you win two Super Bowl championships there and your story and journey there in itself is great right you go from practice squad, practice squad to starter to Super Bowl champion so how would you say you grew as a player and maybe even as a person during that time in Kansas City yeah well you know from being there for for five five years uh you know did a lot of growing um you know just maturing um you know off the field but um, but a lot of, you know, I would say, you know, majority of, of the success that I've had is, is just due to the coaching staff that was there. Um, you know, Andy Heck being um, one of the, a great offensive line coach and, and a great mind for the game truly taught me how to uh, start playing offensive line, essentially in the NFL and then to, to grow into the player that I am. Um, so just the coaching staff that was there, uh, you know, Brad Beach, our GM, uh, you know, bringing me in yeah. and giving me that chance. And, uh, you know, just, you know, Big Red um, dialing it up. So, you know, just, just an incredible group of guys um, and coaching staff really, really helped uh, propel my career. 
And you're such a professional Super Bowl parade champion. We saw that video <sighs> coming in, if we can even roll it again. <laughs> what advice would you give? Like, let's say the commanders win the Super Bowl this year, and you're giving advice to guys on like how to handle this in this mean streets of DC. <laughs> What's the advice you would give in maybe pacing yourself or just that piece of advice you'd give to the future Super Bowl champions? Pacing yourself is incredibly important. Uh, um, I would say just like that, man, just like that video, get out uh, and get active with the crowd, man. I'd love nothing more than to interact with the fans, especially, um, you know, in some, in the, some of the highest points of, of my life. And so, you know, the fans toughing it out with you all season, um, all those games showing up, being loud, supporting. And, uh, you know, it's truly something to just get out there in the streets and, and have a drink with a fan, man. It is, it's truly, a, you know, it, it's an incredible experience. One of the happiest days I've ever had. What's the best moment of winning a Super Bowl? So now you've had two. So now I'm just, I'm really thinking about this. Because to me, the parade is sort of the underrated part. Because it's like not on the field, but it's, you've, you've, granted, you haven't slept in days, I'm sure. But you must feel like an absolute superhero, like a superhero out there in front of all these people, and that must be so rewarding and validating and just fun. From from the moment you realize that you win the Super Bowl to maybe the, the day that the season starts that next year or next season, what is the single moment that is the, that feels the actual best? Um, I don't... So my personal favorite is, you know, just getting my family down on the field when the confetti's falling. Um, that's something that constantly uh, plays in my head. Um, I don't think the actual weight of what happened uh, has hit yet um, during that point. Um, but it is yeah. just truly something special to, to be there on the field, uh, see mom pops and, uh, and, you know, just see the confetti falling with them. You know, everyone's crying, having a great time. Um, but it's just it, that feeling is truly something special, and uh, you know I'll remember that forever. Wait, so when does it hit you? Um, I would say it hits um, once we, you know, once we always get back to the city, and you know it usually hits when I go out, um, you know, usually go out for dinner on the town or something, and it's just the town is just has a different sort of energy about it, um, you know, that championship energy, and so. Um, you know, you kind of look around and it hits you like I was a part of this. Uh, we did this, you know, this community did this. And um, yeah, it took a few days, but um, but that's when it hit me. We love to hear that. And uh, my producer is telling me we have a funny tweet he wants to show you. I don't know if I trust that it'll actually be funny, but here it is. Uh, this is from you. Anyway, who's showing up to this parade tomorrow? I'm trying to chug some beers with you all. <laughs> yeah, yep, yep. And, and that's what I did. And uh like I said, man, it, there's, there's just nothing better than getting out with the fans who have been riding with you for so long. Um, such an yeah. incredibly long season. And, uh, and, they, and you know, and the fans, they're, they're there through it all. They're going, going through it with you. So, you know, it's truly something to, to have that level of interaction. Um, it's very rare. So, you know, I enjoy every minute of it, every ounce of it. Uh, with <laughs> your smile. <laughs> <laughs> Andrew, your smile says it all, and I'm so happy for you. Stop working out. You can say that. I'm sure Ron Rivera, blah, he won't see this. Like, just live your life. Have your, live your best time. It's so crazy that you talk about Super Bowls. Like, yeah, you know, you go back to the city. and they, Like, you, it's happened to you twice. It's so incredible. And we want to talk about the commanders and how you're going to bring that Super Bowl mentality to this new city that so desperately needs that sort of invigoration. But before we do that, you got to talk me through this play, okay? Talk to me. Just... I'm going to show you some video here. What were you thinking when you practiced this for the first time? Man, I was thinking about how I'm going to ice the game and, and win the Super Bowl for my team. <laughs> That's all I was thinking. <laughs> um, um, man, I wish I, uh, you know, really wish I could have uh, got open and, uh, and and made that play go. Uh, this one, um, this one against the Raiders, though, we uh, we got a little razzle dazzle going, a little. Uh, little snow globe <laughs> and uh but you know that's just that's something we dial up when we're having fun uh you know when we were having fun at walkthroughs on saturdays just just having fun and, and pat's usually dialing up something and then you know eb got a hold of it and he really likes it and so you know then coach reed's like well screw it man put it in the playbook let's uh let's get it dialed up and uh that's the natural progression but uh you know in the super bowl you know i really thought i really thought i was going to come down with a touchdown <laughs> and um, you know, sorry to the sorry to the guys. I couldn't make it happen. I couldn't get out clean on my release. That that's my bad. Um, 
but yeah, so I was I was thinking all glory <laughs> when that play got called. All, yeah, exactly. We're we're not even bringing that up, but uh, th you're saying we just dialed it up and we're having we do it when we're having fun. Andrew, that is so disrespectful. <laughs> like it's so disrespectful <laughs> to the Raiders. No, it was uh, so that play. You know, it's not like it was it was you know a play for the Raiders. You know that the play like that needs to be in the playbook for about a month. Uh, before you can even think about uh, putting it up for the week. Um, and so, uh, yeah, we practiced it for a month or two, doing the ring around the rosy, and, uh, you know, never really screwed it up too bad to get it uh, taken out the playbook. So, you know, they dialed it up. I was a little surprised, uh, and it worked. So, you know, that's all she wrote. <laughs> You're like, I got a job to do. Here I am, ring around the posy. It sound, ring around the rosy, it sounds good. Okay, you're wearing that Washington yeah. Commander shirt, which I, I love. And Kansas City yeah. loves you, and they will always love you because you are a legend, a two-time Super Bowl champion. And now you're with a new squad, a new head coach in Ron Rivera, but a very familiar guy in Eric Bieniemy, the OC there. What was free agency like for you, and what ultimately led to your decision? And really, what did Eric play in that? Yeah, well, you know, I got... Um, you know, so much thanks and so much praise for, for Coach EB, um, you know, speaking on my behalf, really fighting for me to get in that building. Um, you know, so that means the world to me, and, you know, and I'm ready to fight for that guy, and, you know, just like we have been for the last five years together. Um, but it happened pretty quick, you know, because I did this whole free agency thing last year, and uh, it took a little while. Um, you know, the money dries up pretty quick. And so I uh, ended up just signing a one-year deal last year. But, you know, this free agency was a little different. I was, uh, you know, me and my agent kind of went back and forth. And, you know, we thought we were going to get something done in the second week. Uh, but then he shows up at my spot here on the first day on Monday with, uh, with a few offers. And so that was, that was really cool to be a part of. And then the fact that, <laughs> uh, you know, D.C. Came in, came in with a little bag there. So, you know, me and him, uh, you know, <laughs> just... <laughs> um, couldn't be more thankful to my agent, man. Becky he really, um, you know, fought for us and, and got it done. And now I'm just, I'm so stoked to get in that building. Um, had some really great interactions with, with the head coach Rivera and, and obviously EB and then just meeting, meeting all the guys around that building. So um, I had a great day there, great signing, and I'm just so excited to, to get down there for OTAs and get after it a little bit. What do you know that the enemy will bring into the table? He's sort of this enigma. I think everyone wants him to be a head coach, thinks he could do the job as a head coach. It hasn't happened for him. He takes this job under Ron Rivera. What is the maybe like the most important quality of his coaching style or him, him as a man that he'll bring into that building? Yeah, he is just he has this commanding energy about him. Uh, he truly takes control of the room. Uh, he commands respect uh, when he talks. Uh, and he's very intense, um, but, you know, he truly believes in what he's preaching. And uh, and I feel like, uh, you know, everybody in that room gets that sense right away. So um, it's just that commanding energy that he carries with him every minute of the day. It's, uh, it's, it's pretty inspiring. So I love that. Are you surprised he's not a head coach? Uh, he definitely uh, has some strong head coach qualities, uh, you know, and I know that he's been interviewing for a while and, you um, you know, I think his future is is, is on an upward path, uh, no doubt. And I think, uh, you know, what we're about to do here in Washington, D.C. in the next three years is going to be something special. And so that will that'll only help yeah. uh, his resume. I love that. I feel like you're going to help uh, do that. Where are you? Play? You, play, you play all over the line. You're super versatile. If you could pick or do you have any idea where they're going to put you or where you want to be? Um, you know, that's all up, all up to the higher ups. Uh, honestly, I'll, I'll do whatever they ask of me. You know, I just, I truly enjoy, uh, the offensive line position as a whole. Um, <laughs> you know, I got experience at pretty much everything but center. So, you know, if, if they, uh, if they leave me out of the center talks, I won't be bad, but anything else is, is, is all good. <laughs> Andrew, this is why you got that bag that you're talking about, because you were the perfect employee. You were the perfect teammate. You're gassing up your OC. You love your head coach. You'll play and do whatever they want you to. It's amazing. Uh, and I love it. Now, I also, I heard, uh, I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm friendly with Michael Rubin, and he's really into these cards and this, you know, he he's taking over the mint condition card vibes and games or whatever, collectibles. You're really big into that. And I'm just learning oh, yeah. about it. You, uh, you, as I understand, have a mint condition LeBron James rookie card, which, is that true? Oh, yeah. Yep. <laughs> okay. Where is it in your house? Is it more valuable to you than your 
Super Bowl ring, like where do you hold it in, in terms of like your importance of prized possessions? Um, that is, it's my most prized card. It's not my most valuable, I don't think, but you know, there's a little story behind it. Um, quick one, you know, me and my dad, we started collecting cards, uh, you know, when I was living at home, young age, and, and he actually picked that up, you know, a few years after, you know, LeBron's rookie year for, you know, 25 bucks. Wow. And then just sat sat in the safe or sat in a drawer or whatever uh, for, for about 20, you know, 15, 20 years, or whatever. And so I finally got back into cards a few years ago and I was like, dang, this thing's pretty nice. And, and we sent it in and it got a got a perfect grade on it. And so um, that's kind of just a cool story about, you know, the first time when I started collecting all the way to now. Um, but I feel I feel like uh, the Super Bowl stuff would be uh, be a little little bit above that. <laughs> Yeah, it's a good answer. But I mean, is this card, I would say this card is worth like 500 bucks. What is it? Is it worth much more than that? No, I mean, it's nothing crazy. Um, you know, and okay. the thing with the card market, it's always up and down. So it's really hard to put a, okay. put a number on it, especially since it's something I would never personally sell. But, um, yeah. but it's, it's a little more than $500, but nothing too crazy. Okay, I just mean something to you personally, which I love. Okay, I know you're a big, and thank you for teaching me that. Uh, you're a big video game guy as well, so I'm sure, you know, everybody's, all the rage is The Last of Us, and that's on, you know, on, on TV now or streaming or whatever. So we're going to play a game based off the of HBO series and video game. It's called The Last of You. It's the last thing we're doing, and it's a rapid-fire style questions. Well, it's kind of like the last time you did something or the last thing you've done. Okay, who was the last teammate that you, who you texted, former or current? Uh, former, I would say it was, it was my guy, Mitchell Schwartz. Uh, I gave him a text yesterday. Um, and so that's my guy, Mitchell Schwartz. Mm -hmm. Mitchell Schwartz, he watches all the games at home on his Lazy Boy. He told me that on my show. Okay. What's yeah. the last movie or TV show that you watched? Last night, and this is an all timer. It's probably in my top five is SWAT. You ever uh, see, see that movie? It's no. always on FX. No. And you got to fight through the commercials because it was just on TV. But that, that's an all-timer right there. Every time it's on TV, I'll put it on. You're sitting there watching SWAT on regular TV with commercials. Andrew Wiley, that is the best thing I've ever heard. When is the last <sighs> time you bought a pair? When is the last time you bought a pair of shoes? Uh, last night. I bought, some, I bought some Jordan golf shoes. Man, I'm trying to get my golf swag up. So uh, I got the clubs, uh, you know, I got the fit. Now I just, I need some, I need some Jordans out there. So I got some Jordan sixes and some, uh, some twelves. Sounds like a Super Bowl <laughs> champions off season. I like it. When is, what is the last chain <clears throat> restaurant you ate at? Mm, you know, there's one down the street here in Florida called Charlie's. I think it's a chain, uh, but it's a nice steakhouse. Yep, had a, had a nice steak and oh, a glass Charlie's? of wine. So, yeah, I don't, I, don't, I, I could have a, another that, word that at the end of it. Yeah, I think it's a chain, though. I think it's a chain. <laughs> that counts. Oh, Charlie Houlihan's. It's all the same. Okay. When's the <laughs> last time you bought something that you were like, oh, my gosh, why did I buy this? I spent too much money on this. You had buyer's remorse. When's the last time? Oh, that's tough uh, because, you know, I like I like getting out there shopping. But I would probably say, you know, when we were in Arizona uh, for the Super Bowl, they had some very nice shopping centers around there. And I probably bought bought a hoodie at a store that I didn't need to. Um, but you know, it's going to look good, but I, I probably won't wear it over 10 times. One of those things. <laughs> Andrew Wiley likes shopping, spent his Super Bowl week shopping in Arizona, which I love. And he's the one who watches SWAT. I was always wondering who watches SWAT and here he is. Andrew Wiley, good luck in Washington. Congratulations on the bag, which means you never have to have buyer's remorse and all blessed things and uh, just good vibes to you going forward. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you guys so much. I appreciate it. Yeah, we appreciate you and congratulations. Two time Super Bowl champion Andrew Wiley will be back after this. John Rothstein, what happened to Purdue? This is March. Purdue. Don't?